Hello guys, how are you? I am Alexa here. Today I am here to present or to talk about what is remote sensing and tell you some of its application. So not to waste any time, let's dig into the PowerPoint presentation. What is remote sensing? Remote that means something which is not exactly in contact or in physical contact, something which is far away, the far away could be something slightly away or even very far away. And sensing is the second word. Sensing means getting information, getting data or getting any input could be something like temperature, pressure or a photograph. When you look at these two terms remote sensing normally people just thinks of one technology and that is the satellite remote sensing. Well remote sensing is used primarily for the technology where we have sensors on board satellite orbiting around the Earth, which have scanners and cameras on them, which scanning the Earth's surface and drilling the image down. Since it's collecting information about the Earth's surface from far away this term applies to this phenomena, but if we look in the broader sense of word even thing like your sonograph, your medical imaging, or even simple x-rays. They are all remote sensing because we getting information, or you really getting data about things without actually being physical contact with it. So if you want it in precise definition well it's According to the India's National Remote Sensing Agency in RSA Defined as, remote sensing is the technique of deriving information about objects on the surface of the earth without physically coming into contact with them Or The art and science of obtaining information about an object without being in direct contact with the object is called remote sensing. Distance of remote sensing. Remote sensing occurs at a distance from the object or area of interest. It could be 1 meters, 1000 meters or greater than 1 million meters. Nowadays, remote sensing is mainly done from space using satellites. Remote sensing is classified into two types. First, in respect to the types of energy resources. Second, in respect to wavelength region. In respect to the types of energy resources they are classified into two types. They are passive and active remote sensing. Just imagine yourself, you are in a close room, and there is a standalone camera in front of you and two spotlights are facing to each other. What happening now is remote sensing there is a digital camera in front of you, an amazing collecting data or photograph of you because you are being illuminated by these two spotlight. This is very similar to how sun illuminates the earth's surface and reflectance from earth's surface is collected by satellite. So the sensor itself not having a sources of illuminating the ground surface or the object which it is imaging the sun the earth and satellite or sensor. It is a classic example to understand passive remote sensing. It is passive because the sensor itself not carrying its own source of energy, just like a standalone camera does not have its own illumination source. So what is active? Active is when the sensors embodies within itself the sources of illumination. Suppose we had a camera which is used to have a built-in flash on them, so the moment you click the picture the flash would fire the light. Light from the flash would get reflected from the object and the camera would record a picture. So in this case the camera is also carrying the source of illumination. I have put rather very simple when it comes to a sense of active remote sensing. We understand active remote sensing and radar because when you have satellite which is equipped with a radar transponder it's sending radar or radio waves which bounce off the earth's surface. The time required for the waves to hit the earth's surface and information recorded by sensors on the satellite is what is utilized for making an image. It is an excellent example of remote sensing. In respect to wavelength region. Remote sensing can also be done in other wavelength also. They are classified as 
First, visible and reflective infrared remote sensing. Second, thermal infrared remote sensing. Third, microwave remote sensing. This is a compare image of passive and active remote sensing. Process of remote sensing. From the source, energy propagate without loss to a homogeneous target. Electromagnetic radiation can interact with an object in five ways such as reflected, transmitted, absorbed, emitted and scattered, and result in return signal of reflected and emitted energy. The return signal propagate without loss to a sensor, that respond linearly to energy of all wavelength of any intensity. In real time, an intensity versus wavelength response is recorded, processed into interpretable format and recognized as being unique to the particular target or particular chemical physical state. The information obtained from particular target is made available in useful form to the users. Since we have to get information about some object that object will need to be illuminated or you should be able to see the object. Let's try and understand in a very simple terms. Imagine yourself in a close room with standalone camera in front of you and two spotlight facing to each other. What happening the camera is recording you that's in a way remote sensing, but the camera detect you or filming you only because there is sufficient enough illumination by these two spotlight, which are there in a close room. Imagine a situation where suddenly a power fails there is no light when the camera is on. But it will not able to detect you. So the primary for any remote sensing we need a source of illumination. Conventionally illumination would be only invisible spectra that means light. Which light the way human understand it, or the ways our eyes perceive light. But remote sensing is also done in other wavelength, also like infrared ray, also in the radar region, or in the thermal infrared ray. So let's us understand the process the first steps is you need illumination. In our case the primarily illumination all around comes from sun, so you have sun's energy transmitting through space, coming through the atmosphere layers on the earth falling on the earth's surface, as it transmit through the earth. There are some wavelength, which gets absorbed some just don't through. The light falls on the earth's surface interact with it. Now the term tracks means a lot every object on the Earth's surface has its own intrinsic properties of absorbing and reflecting of sunlight. So as a light falls it attract whatever is reflected from the object and some of it's also radiated from the object and transmitted again back through the Earth atmosphere and should be detected by a sensor. The sensor can be on board the satellite, which we have launched, it can be on a sensor, which is on aircraft and today very popularly it could also be on drones. So the first steps is detection. The satellite or sensor record the signal. The next step is whatever data you have collected is either downloaded or transmitted to Earth Station or Processing Center, where in very very rather mathematical ways correction need to be done. So these correction are done by the organization which own this satellite, which could be government or private sector. After these preliminary correction that digital data is available to user. There are three remote sensing platform. They are First Ground-based Ground-based sensor are often used to record detailed information about the surface that is compared with information collected from aircraft or satellite sensors. Second Airplane-based Aircrafts are often used to collect very detailed images and facilitate the collection of data over virtually any portion of the Earth's surface at any time. Third Satellite-based. Satellite remote sensing is mainly used for digital imaging technique. Application of remote sensing. Remote sensing is the addition of information about the object or any phenomena without making any physical contact with the object. It is a phenomena that has numerous application including photography, surveying, geology, forestry, and many more. But it is in the field of agriculture and geology that remote sensing has found significant use. First in agriculture. Remote sensing gives the soil moisture data and helps in determining the quantity of moisture in the soil 
and hence the types of crops that can be grown in the soil. This information is used to determine whether a particular soil is moisture deficient or not and helps in planning the irrigation needs of the soil. Satellite and airborne images are used as mapping tools to classify crops, examine their health and viability, and monitor farming practices. Second in geology. Remote sensing used in the geological science as a data addition method complementary to field observation because it allows mapping of geological characteristics of region without physical contact with the areas being explored. Geology involves the study of landform structures and subsurface to understand the process operating in the Earth's crust. Geological studies are not limited only to the Earth remote sensing has been used to examine the composition and structure of the other planets. Remote sensing is used as a tool to extract information about the land surface, composition, or subsurface. Land use applications involve both baseline mapping and subsequent monitoring, since timely information is required to know what current quantity of land is in what type of use, and to identify the land use changes from year to year. Land use applications of remote sensing include the following. Natural resource management. Wildlife habitat protection. Barcelona mapping for the use input. Urban expansion. Advantages of remote sensing. Remote sensing has come a long way in recent years and is an impressive surveying technique with many different advantages. First, remote sensing technology can survey large and inaccessible areas. Remote sensing is a fast process. Sensors used to measure light reflections from surfaces are mounted to an aircraft drone, or even a satellite. This positioning of the sensors allows them to cover a large area in a short time. By surveying from the air, remote sensors are also able to scan and create maps of inaccessible areas. Second, remote sensing data can have a wide range of uses. Once remote sensors have collected data, it can be used and analyzed multiple times for different applications. Third, remote sensing doesn't disturb people or the environment. Remote sensors measure reflected light either natural sunlight or a light pulse. This light is harmless to objects, vegetation, and people, so remote sensing does not disrupt the scan environment. So it is perfect for surveying built-up areas as there is no need to close roads and cities can go about business as usual. Disadvantages of remote sensing Unfortunately, nothing is without limitations, and remote sensing does have some disadvantages. While the advantages outweigh the downsides, it's a good idea to consider the following cons of remote sensing before investing in this survey technique. First, remote sensing instruments need to be calibrated. Before use, remote sensing instruments need to be calibrated to achieve accurate measurements. This means there's room for human error if the instruments aren't calibrated correctly. Second, high resolution data from remote sensing can be hard to store. Remote sensing gives you the option to collect data in a range of scales and resolutions. But if you decide to collect high-resolution data, it can be difficult to store. Data from large projects can require hundreds of gigabytes of storage. There are many types of storage facilities out there including Amazon Cloud or Azure's. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the session.